Hi, this is Javina from the QuickBooks team. Reconciling your bank and credit card accounts with your transactions in QuickBooks is one of the most important maintenance steps in accounting. For those of you who don't know, reconciliation is the process of matching your bank and credit card statements to your records in QuickBooks. That's to make sure everything is up to date and accurate. This process should be done once a month when you receive your statements. Mostly, this is to make sure your records are accurate and any errors are fixed promptly. Now, if you're using the Bank Connection feature in QuickBooks, you're already ahead of the game. The Bank Connection has already brought in your transactions into QuickBooks, making reconciliation much easier. Check the video linked in our description to learn how to connect your bank and credit cards, set up rules, and automatically bring in transactions. Now, whether it's done automatically or manually, having all your transactions up to date is an important first step in reconciling your accounts. I'm going to show you how to quickly but accurately bring in your transactions into QuickBooks from the bank feeds. For demonstration purposes, I've set up a bank account with manual uploads. If you set up a live bank feed connection, you should see here on this card that there are three numbers. This top number is the bank balance. Again, it will show if you have a live account connected because I'm doing manual uploads, the balance is not showing. Just below it is the in QuickBooks balance. The reason these two numbers can differ is because sometimes there are transactions that hit the bank that haven't been entered in QuickBooks or vice versa where transactions have been entered in QuickBooks but have not been processed yet by your bank or you're waiting to collect payment. In some cases, when the two numbers do not match, it's often related to the opening balance equity that was entered when setting up the account in QuickBooks and the date you selected to import your transactions. If this is the first time doing a reconciliation, the opening balance equity will impact your beginning balance, so I'll show you how to correct that in just a moment. The last number here is the number of transactions that I have waiting to be reviewed and added to QuickBooks. Now, to correct the opening balance, you can go to your chart of accounts, open the account history for the relevant account, and find the opening balance equity transaction. It should be the first, if not the only transaction in your account. You will then edit this to match your actual opening balance as of the beginning of your reconciliation period. For example, if the statement is from January 1st to February 1st, and you're starting your reconciliation from that date, you will enter your bank balance as of January 1st. Again, only if your opening balance is incorrect, you'll want to update the amount here and then make sure the date is at the beginning of the reconciliation period. Okay, moving on, a few things you want to make sure here is that the payee and category are assigned correctly. QuickBooks will intuitively suggest payees and categories to you based on what you have selected in the past, but it's not always correct, which is why there are suggestions that you need to double check. In a way, you're doing a preliminary reconciliation at this point. To speed this up, I'm going to go ahead and add all of these transactions into QuickBooks. And we can see here the transactions to review is now zero. If we were doing this at the end of January and the bank was connected, we would also see here that the bank balance and the QuickBooks balance would be matching. We can also click on the magnifying glass in the top right to see that all of our expenses or transactions have been added. If you excluded any transactions that hit your bank, Remember, this is going to throw your reconciliation balance off because something that hit your bank is now not being recorded in QuickBooks. Now we're ready to begin reconciliation. We're set up in QuickBooks, we have all our transactions in, and I have my bank statement as well. You can print yours out so you can check off or highlight as you go down the statement. This is just a good way to ensure there are no errors in the bank feed transactions that were pulled into QuickBooks. There are three ways to start the reconciliation. You only need to remember one, but I'll go through all three of them. So the first way is to go to the accounting tab and then down to reconcile. 
and you're in the reconciliation window. Alternatively, you can click on the chart of accounts. You can double click the account and then reconcile here in the, on the right hand side. Um, you can also go into the gear icon and then down to reconcile. All of these steps will open up the reconciliation section of QuickBooks for you. Next, you're going to find the account that's ready to be reconciled. In my case, it's the Scotiabank account. And then just below it, you'll see your beginning balance. In my case, this is the opening balance equity as of January 1st, 2021. Uh, if you're doing your reconciliation for the first time and you notice that the beginning balance is wrong, what you can do is edit the opening balance equity transaction that I showed you how to find earlier or what you can do is create a new transaction. So if you're adding to the amount, uh, you can create a bank deposit. Um, just make sure the account is selected up here. The date should be before your reconciliation period. Uh, for the account, you'll select opening balance equity and then add the amount here. Alternatively, you can create an expense to reduce the amount. Again, um, just make sure your bank account is selected here and then you'll select opening balance equity um, as the account here and then reduce the amount um, by the amount that you enter here. On either transaction, just make sure the opening balance equity account is selected and the bank account is selected. And also you want to make sure the date for the transaction is before your reconciliation period. Next, I'm going to open my bank statement and then go ahead and enter my end balance from my statement, which is $15,000 and then the end date um, for the statement period. So that's going to be January 31st. Remember your end date is not always the end of the month. For credit cards, your statement period might be the 10th of every month. So it could go January 10th to February 10th. Um, you're just going to enter what you see on your statement. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and start reconciling. Now you'll notice this looks similar to the bank feed screen. Um, if you notice here that your ending balance uh, was entered incorrectly at any point, you can edit the info and fix that ending balance uh, at any point during the reconciliation. And there's also a calculation here with your uh, beginning balance as well as whatever you check off uh, of your payments and deposits. These numbers will change consistently as you check or uncheck transactions here. Um, I'm just going to minimize this for now to open up some more real estate. Now, if your statement is broken up into payments and deposits, so money in and money out, you can filter this window accordingly. Or you can select all and see them all on this page. You'll also notice that QuickBooks has applied an automatic filter to filter the transactions based on the statement ending date that I entered on the previous screen. On top of that, QuickBooks has already checked off all of those transactions because they were all came in from the bank feed. So if you notice here, um, it tells me that these transactions were manually added from the bank feed. So like I mentioned earlier, we did a preliminary reconciliation. So we don't have to go through this again. Um, QuickBooks is basically saying that they the transactions, they came in through the bank feed, so they had to have happened. They're most likely going to be on your statement. So we're going to check it off for you so you don't have to go through the process of verifying. So it just speeds up the process for you. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to uncheck all of these transactions and clear this filter. This is going to show me transactions that I have in February as well that I've entered into QuickBooks manually. So again, if you don't have 
the bank feed connected and you haven't imported transactions from the bank feed to QuickBooks, um, this is the process that you're going to see. These would be manual uh, transactions and then you would go through your statement and one by one check them off as they appear on your statement. So just to show you a couple, I'll do that here. So we see that my, there's a Petro Canada a transaction for 5033. I'll go ahead and check that off and then I will just highlight it here on my statement. Um, and then again, the next one is 20, uh, 250.99. Again, I can cross it off. Um, and similarly, you're going to do that for the rest of them going down. Now, what are you going to do if you have a transaction on your statement that isn't in QuickBooks? Well, you're going to go to the Create menu and create that transaction because if it's on your statement, it means that it happened and you need to add it. If you see transactions on the reconciliation page that are not on your bank statement, um, something you need to check is make sure that the transaction was recorded uh, correctly. So it recorded against the correct bank account or credit card. Um, another thing to check is uh, if it's outside of your statement period. So as we can see here, without the filter, uh, these transactions are from February. And so obviously they wouldn't show up on a statement that ends in January, uh, on January 31st. So something to note here is that uh, all transactions recorded against this particular account will show up on the reconciliation page if they haven't been reconciled yet. So technically you could do like three, four, five bank, bank statements or bank reconciliations all at once. You can have all those statements open in front of you and go through all of them uh, one by one. You would enter the ending balance of your very last statement. Um, you can do this if you don't have too many transactions hitting your bank on a monthly basis. Otherwise, it's probably a good idea to stick to it, uh, to, to the reconciliation on a monthly basis. And again, if you're using the bank feed feature in QuickBooks, it's just going to be a lot easier for you. The items are going to be checked off and you're most likely going to be sure that all of these amounts are correct. Um, it's when you're adding the transactions manually that um, you, you might see some errors in your uh, transactions here. So if you see an amount that's wrong or it doesn't match your statement, you can click on the transaction itself and edit it. So let's click on this one and edit. So here you can edit and then save the transaction. Remember, if you navigate away from this page, you can always uh, come back and resume where you left off. If you want to purposely um, step away, you can save for later and again, resume where you left off when you come back. And then again, as I'm verifying these transactions and checking them off, you'll notice that the balances up here are changing. And it's the difference here that you want to make sure is at a zero because we want what's in QuickBooks to match the credit card or bank um, and don't want to see any difference there. So again, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to edit one of these transactions and show you what happens there. So let's say I've verified my bank statement and all my transactions and I can't find where this 99 cent difference is. QuickBooks will let you finish the reconcile, but what it'll do is um, create a journal entry to make up for the difference. Uh, it's basically writing off the balance and you're assuming the loss. 
This sort of thing happens when you're manually recording your transactions. So say you invoiced your client uh, one amount, but they send you back another amount. Um, then there's a small difference. So this sort of thing happens when you're manually entering your transactions from data entry errors. So be sure to check all your entries first, double check them, triple check them. Um, the transaction that you see in QuickBooks uh, or this sort of thing happens when you're manually entering transactions. So from a data, like from a data entry error, this sort of thing happens when you're manually entering transactions from a data entry errors. So be sure to check your double check your entries, triple check your entries. This sort of thing happens when you're manually entering your transactions from data entry errors. So be sure to double check, triple check your entries first. Uh, the transaction or the amount that you see in QuickBooks is from your manually created invoice and then the bank will show you what you actually received. Um, so again, if you're using bank feeds, you would have caught this error on the bank feed screen and you would have fixed it at that point. But uh, before processing this journal entry and assuming a loss, it's best to look through your transactions again and verify which transaction holds the difference. And uh, if your accountant is okay with it, then you can go ahead and have QuickBooks create the journal entry if you really can't find it. So again, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish reconciling with the adjustment. Um, and then at this point, you can attach a statement, attach your bank statement, um, or click done. And that's it, your reconciliation is complete. So now let's take a quick look at the history uh, by account. This is where you'll see all your past reconciliations. And for this reconciliation in particular, um, we had QuickBooks create that journal entry for 99 cents, so we can see it here as an auto adjustment. You can also come back here and attach your bank statements, and uh, you can also review your reconciled report. So if I click on view report, you can see everything that was processed, um, the deposits and payments that were cleared. Um, Basically, this is a snapshot of what happened on this date. Now, if I go back and I make any changes to any of these transactions, I'll see that on the changes column here. And this will impact my uh, beginning balance for the next period, so the next reconciliation that I do. So. Before you make any changes to any transactions, be sure to go to the account in the chart of accounts. And if you see an R beside that transaction, it means that it's been reconciled already. So I'll just show you that really quickly here. You'll see that all of these transactions have an R beside them because they were um, just reconciled. So again, you just want to be careful if be, uh, making any changes to these transactions as they will throw off your reconciliation for the next period. And then the C that you see here is for a transaction from February. This was also downloaded from my bank feed, so it's showing cleared here. Um, like I mentioned earlier, transactions that come in through the bank feed have gone through a preliminary uh, check or a reconciliation. It's as if QuickBooks is assuming that if it hit your bank, uh, it's gonna hit your books and it likely happened in reality. So reconciliation in QuickBooks is pretty straightforward and even more so when you're using the bank feeds in QuickBooks. Uh, however, I will go over some tips if there are any discrepancies that you see. So the first thing you want to figure out is where the difference is coming from, whether it's from your money in transactions, such as your deposits and payments, or if it's from your money out transactions, so your withdrawals or your expenses. 
breaking it down like this will make it easier for you to find the difference. The second thing you want to do is double check any manual transactions. So this is where data entry errors are likely to occur. So ensure that you have the correct bank account selected. And if you're using bank feeds, make sure that you haven't duplicated any transactions with the manual entry. You can do this by searching for a transaction of the exact dollar amount of the difference. And then the third thing to check is the ending period of your statement and the ending balance on your statement. Again, these things are uh, these are things that you've manually entered in QuickBooks, so these fields are prone to, again, data entry errors. Um, and then just checking on your reconciliation page in QuickBooks, make sure all the transactions selected are also within your period. So finally, remember what happens in your bank should match what you record in QuickBooks. And that is how you reconcile in QuickBooks Online and solve some common errors.